All right, so today I'm going to be discussing kidney or renal failure. Um, you may hear me refer to it as kidney disease or, um, yeah, or renal disease as well. Oh, there we go. All right, so just a quick overview of the kidneys. I'm not going to go too in depth um, because this is what we did yesterday. Um, the kidneys filter waste from the body uh, via the blood, and these wastes are known as urea. Um, they regulate concentrations of sodium, potassium, glucose, and water in the body. Um, the functional units are known as nephrons. Again, we went over this yesterday a little bit. And um, the kidney produces hormones um, such as urethropoietin, uh, renin, and active vitamin D. Here is just an, um, a quick picture, uh, like the ones we went over yesterday, of the functional unit of the kidney. What I'm going to be discussing today is kidney failure. Um, kidney failure is not the inability to um, produce urine. Um, however, it kind of is the inability to produce a concentrated urine. Um, the actual definition is a decline in kidney function and yeah, the inability to filter out wastes such as medication and toxic toxic substances um, in the body, and this leads to them building up. And kidney disease is a lot more prevalent in cats, um, but it is very prevalent in both geriatric cats and dogs, so older cats and dogs. And if anyone has any questions while I'm going or wants me to slow down, just, just hold your hand up or shout it out. Um, Here's a, an example of uh, what a diseased kidney might look like. Um, as you can see, the shrunken pale cortex and this granular scarring around the outside. Um, so the diseased kidneys will look smaller. Here's another example. Uh, this shows a few different issues that could be um, all under the term diseased kidney. So here you have a tumor. Uh, here you have some infection and scarring. You have stones here, and you have this stone here. Um, here's this atrophy that was on the last picture, and then here's this polycystic kidney, um, which we looked at yesterday. Uh, acute renal failure is rapid renal failure that occurs in a period of a few days to weeks. Um, and this is common in all ages of cats and dogs, not just the older cats and dogs. Um, and the main causes of this are extrinsic factors, so factors that aren't in the body. Um, these can include poisons and toxins, such as if your dog gets a hold of any of your human medication, um, certain foods, and also um, plants like lilies in cats are, uh, lilies are toxic to cats. Um, different trauma, uh, which can cause rapid blood loss or rapid dehydration, can cause acute renal failure. Also infection, um, the bacteria known as leptospirosis um, that we commonly vaccinate our dogs against can cause acute renal failure. Um, heart failure can also lead to renal failure and um, due to the kidneys aren't getting enough blood flow. And then also stones can um, block the ureter and cause urine to build up in the kidney and uh, damage it as well. Chronic renal failure, also known as chronic kidney disease, um, it occurs over a longer period of time, so this can take place over months to even years. Um, this can be happening throughout the entire lifespan of your dog or cat, um, and it's just a general wearing out of the kidneys over time. Um, most of the time, it won't be detected until the disease is um, progressed a lot more, uh, and it is irreversible. Some of the most common causes of it are high or low blood pressure or thyroid problems, and also long-term NSAID use. Um, NSAIDs are uh, pain medications such as ibuprofen for you and me. Um, and the main cause of chronic renal failure is actually dental disease. And this might shock some people, but um, 
bacteria enter the bloodstream through the gums, and then they travel to the kidneys and damage the kidneys. Some of the signs and symptoms associated with renal failure include polydipsia, or the increase in water, in, um, polyuria, which is increased urination, and these two commonly happen together. Um, you can see a loss in appetite, weight loss, vomiting, swelling in the face and paws, um, a f more foul-smelling breath <laughs> than usual, um, mouth ulcers, uh, you might see them acting kind of confused or uh, just abnormal. And you might also see um, hematuria or blood in the urine. And these are just a few um, many symptoms could be observed. Um, in chronic kidney failure, these signs may not be seen until two-thirds of the kidney function is lost. So again, the diseases pro progress pretty far. And then in acute kidney failure, these may come about rapidly because the um, loss of function is also rapid. Um, the diagnostics that are associated with um, renal failure include um, you would want to perform a blood chemistry panel. Um, this would include looking at the blood urea nitrogen or the BUN levels and the creatinine levels. Um, you could also perform a um, SDMA panel, um, the, these can be done in-house in most vet clinics um, using an, I, an IDEX machine. Um, and SDMA is a renal biomarker. Um, it's not very important to know what it stands for, but it, all you really should know is that it, it's just a renal biomarker. And high SDMA levels indicate that the glomerular filter rate is um, abnormal or impaired. Um, other diagnostics you can do is a urinalysis, and you want to look at the specific gravity and also the proteinuria, um, so the protein levels in urine. And the specific gravity um, can be one of the earliest indications that there might be a problem with the kidneys. Um, this is just a um, Antec diagnostic form showing the super chem um, blood chemistry panel that was done. Um, as you can see here, the BUN levels are high, the creatinine levels are high, um, and those are just some of the things that you might see, um, see in this chronic kidney disease. As you can see, the, the cat here we have is um, kind of older, 10. Looking at this, sorry if you can't see the picture super well, but this is an IDEX form showing the SDMA panel. Um, the SDMA levels are a little bit elevated. The creatinine levels are high. Um, and also the globulin levels are high. Um, and here it gives a little um, description of what's going on and gives you some tips for what should be done next. And it says, both the SDMA and creatinine levels are increased, which indicates that a kidney disease is probable, um, and also says that a urinalysis should be performed to um, further diagnose kidney disease. And this is the cat that we just see, saw the um, SDMA test for, um, and it says that the SDMA levels was slightly above borderline. Again, this is what we just saw. The creatinine level is high. Um, and these are um, showing that the cat had this dental problem. So what was observed in the teeth is also, um, you can see this in the blood. And, but when the urinalysis were, was performed on this cat, no proteinuria was um, seen or the, ele the levels weren't elevated. So this Chronic kidney disease has not progressed very far, and it says that we should just do a kind of um, maintenance diet to, uh, to just further prevent the onset of the disease. This is a urinalysis stick. Um, I performed a few of these. They're super simple. You just um, do it by putting little drops of urine all on these little... Um, these little indicator strips, you wait 30 to 60 seconds, and then you compare it to the normal and abnormal um, colors that are seen here on the box. 
Um, this is a refractometer um, used to look at the specific gravity. Um, you put a little drop of urine right here, you hold it up to the light, and then you look at where this line is at. And then if, um, with those tests, if you see the diagnosis of kidney disease being probable, um, some of the treatments that you could go through are an um, IV or subcutaneous fluid treatment. Um, this is meant to flush out the toxins that have accumulated throughout the body and also replace the electrolytes that were lost. Um, in that one panel, you saw that potassium levels were high in the urine. This means that potassium is passing out of the body, so you need to replace that. Um, and these treatments could, um, could be occurring. You might do these um, weekly. If the kidney disease has progressed far enough, you might only have to do them monthly or, um, or bi-monthly. It just depends on the progression of the disease. Um, again, with cr chronic kidney disease, uh, it's incurable, so you're just expanding, expanding the, life, um, the lifespan of the dog or cat. And then you also want to control the symptoms. So uh, you might give the dog appetite stimulants or um, a renal support diet to uh, increase the amount it wants to eat, um, and then also medications to just kind of control the symptoms. And the prognosis or the um, estimated time that the pet has to live just depends on the stage that um, the kidney disease is caught at, and then also what steps you're willing to take to prevent the disease from occurring. And in acute kidney disease, if you detect it early enough, it can, the damage can be reversed and the pet can um, fully recover. Um, fluids are also given um, to flush out the toxins. Um, medications can be given. And then also a renal support diet can help to um, get the pet back on track. Um, some prevention that you can use to prevent kidney disease. Um, again, this is not a uh, foolproof prevention method, but um, dental cleanings will help reduce the risk of the bacteria getting into the gums and then going to the kidneys. Um, a leptospirosis vaccine. Um, you can do annual blood tests, again, to catch it early. Um, senior wellness panels help to monitor the BUN and creatinine levels. Um, and also these special nutrition diets. Um, and here I just have a few of the different renal support diets that are out there. Um, Royal Canin has a lot of different um, varieties, Purina, and also Hills. And here's just a little, um, what I showed you on the last slide, how Royal Canin has all these different um, varieties. Um, these are made because the appetite is being suppressed in the dog or cat, um, you do want them to eat. So um, all of these different flavors or types of food are meant to um, eventually get the dog or cat to find one that they like. And this is just, you, you just have to do a trial and error to find out what your dog or cat is actually going to eat. <laughs> And also one thing I found that um, I did not know about when I was studying this is um, Antec Diagnostics actually has um, this new technology they call Renal Tech. And in cats, it uses artificial intelligence to um, predict if your cat is going to have kidney disease in the next two years. And it um, is really cool at how accurate it actually is. You see 95% accuracy um, when you're thinking about a cat's lifespan, two years is a lot of time where you can be preventing the kidney disease and then further expanding their life. Um, and how it works is just you do, um, uh, first you do one blood sample and urine sample, and then you wait another three to six months and do another one and send those in, and then they'll um, come up with a predictive value um, that will tell you whether your cat might be positive for kidney disease in the next few years or negative. And here are just a bunch of the reference I use. Is there any questions?